it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. I have a new laptop, yay, and stuff. Um, I'm going to do a quick overview of this thing, because I am not the kind of person who does the really technical reviews of things like Windows, PCs and laptops. I've done one or two on like um, stuff that was sent from China, which was very low powered budget stuff, um, viewed from the perspective of a retro gamer. And I'm going to do a similar kind of thing here. So what is this? It is a Hewlett Packard HP Pavilion 15-BC400NA. Yep, catchy name. That really rolls off the tongue. It's, uh, it's basically an i5-8250U powered laptop with a 1050 GTX 1050 NVIDIA graphics chipset thingamajig on board. Let's have a look at it. Um, it's black, as you can see. It, um, it picks up fingerprints, as you can see. Other than that, I quite like the, uh, the general finish of it. It's, it's not overly fancy, but it's not cheap and nasty either. Uh, SD card. In fact, I think it reads more than just SD cards, but that's pretty much what you're going to stick in there. Camera doesn't want to focus on it. There we go. A um, couple of USB, no, a single USB and an HDMI and an Ethernet and power. On that side, on the back, we have nothing but venting. Um, very effective, it turns out. On the other side, we have a couple of USBs. They're all, um, well, I, I assume they're USB 3, but given that they're black instead of blue, I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, one of those lock thingamajigs, I forget what they call them and who cares. Um, headphone, well, headset, that takes mic and headphones, uh, useful for gaming. Which is what this thing is actually all about, because it is a low-cost gaming PC, uh, PC laptop. And I say low-cost, because gaming laptops tend to cost in the order of over a thousand pounds quite often for a decent one you could go up to like maybe two thousand for a really good one but I you know that's way 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 out of my price range this I did buy with my own money I saved up for a year because I don't earn a lot um, this cost me 599 pounds it's already gone up there's one left on Amazon as I look there right now, and it's currently £699, so I've got a bit of a bargain there. Um, what can I tell you about it in terms of specs? As I've said, it's got the Intel i5-8250U, or 0U, 8GB of RAM, 1TB hard drive, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 graphics card with 2GB of dedicated RAM, Windows 10 Home. Um, there was another laptop on Amazon that I was looking at, which was very similar to this, and I'm not sure if I can find it now. It was uh, called the HD Pavilion Power, and it was very similar to this, except it had a different... Um, CPU and it had a uh, what you call it it had a, a solid state hard drive the CPU was a generation earlier and though it had a higher clock speed than this uh, research suggested that this one actually was more powerful and more efficient so uh, I went for this one and I, I think I made the right choice certainly I appreciate all of the um, extra hard drive storage space let me don't watch for a moment, I'm going to put in my password. There, look at the ceiling. There you are, you can see it again now, password is in. So just looking at it, the general style and design of the thing, it's interesting, all black, which is just kind of cool. If, if you have gothic tendencies like what I do, 
black laptop, black everything, black keyboard. White borders around the keys. It's not backlit. The, the keyboard isn't backlit. Don't care. I don't play in the dark. Some people might. Um, I mean, what can I really tell you about it? It has one or two quirks. No, actually, it has two quirks. When I booted it up for the first time, you, it, it did what you would expect it to do and insisted on doing a system update, updating Windows. You expect that. They all do it. It's annoying. It takes bloody ages. But it did that. And then it decided it wanted to do a firmware update. And I said, OK, fine, go ahead and do your firmware update. And it rebooted and said, sorry, couldn't do the firmware update. Please try again. Words to that effect. So I tried again and it failed again. And I did not know why. I was quite annoyed because it kept giving me nagging requesters and reminders saying, you need to do a firmware update. And I'm like, I'm trying. Um, bit of research, found out to do the firmware update, you've got to unplug the power supply and do it on the batteries. Why? I don't know. To my mind, that's just absolutely stupid. But there it is. If you should buy one of these... Um, and I do think it's worth buying before we just go on for ages and ages. I think it's great. Um, if you should buy one of these and it, it's wanting to do the firmware update, make sure your battery is fully charged and then unplug your power supply and it will do it just fine. The other quirky thing I found was when I came to install games. I installed Grand Theft Auto V. It was the first PC based... No, it was the first game I installed because I wanted to see how powerful is this thing? Will it run it? We'll come on to how powerful it is in a minute. But anyway, I had run Grand Theft Auto V on a seriously less, less powerful, several less powerful laptops than this. I wouldn't say it ever ran well on them, but, you know, it, it did run. Um, so I tried to run it on this, and it was like, nah, mate, ain't doing it. I haven't got the required oomph forget it and shut itself off um, which I was like what the hell it's a bloody gaming laptop of course you can run it um, what it turns out is you've got two graphics chipsets on here what you're seeing at the moment this screen is being produced by the internal integrated chipset I don't know what it is it's it's shite <laughs> really it's worse than on like um, the the cheap, very low cost, slim Chinese budget laptop that I've got. That thing could at least launch GTA 5. This thing could not. So um, what the hell is that all about? Well, the other chipset obviously is the NVIDIA GTX 1050. And you've got this. Let me zoom in. That, oh... Zooming in, great, yeah. That there, which you can't see because it's all blurred, that is the NVIDIA control panel, which you launch and you tell it what programs will use what chipset. Um, it's not difficult to do, it's self-explanatory. I'm not going to demonstrate here. If you've got half a brain, and I'm sure you have, you'll be able to work out how to do it. But basically, tell the thing to use the 1050 chipset to run your games. As soon as you do that, they run very nicely, thank you very much. So, um, what's it like performance-wise? The first thing I did to test it was a, um, a test render of a video clip, one of my gameplay videos. It was a five-minute clip of, uh, I don't even remember what game it was, doesn't matter, which was stored on uh, whatever the native format is coming off of this camcorder that I'm using at the moment. Can't even remember, it's MTS something or other, I can't remember. Uh, recorded at 1080i and I rendered it down to a 720p high bit thingamajig what's it I don't remember pretty high quality anyway um, and I did that on my old desktop which is a first generation i5 it's a dual core running at 3.2 gigahertz I also rendered it on this laptop, which is an i5 8th generation quad core running at 1.6 gigahertz. It turbos up to 3. Point something, but it can't sustain that forever so long. So I thought, well, 
it's more modern but it's like half the speed if it even comes close to matching what my desktop does I will be happy I made a record of uh, the results the i5 650 on my desktop rendered it in 16 minutes and 16 seconds that's a five minute video clip mm. this thing did it in eight minutes and 24 seconds so double the speed despite the half the clock speed which just goes to show modern CPU architecture is impressive and efficient and four cores eight threads um, it does the trick you don't need clock speed to have power so uh, yeah demonstration time I guess I'm going to record the screen using the camera as I'm inclined to do in my gameplay videos let me turn the lights off but also if I can figure it out you'll see it do a thing right this thing will do a thing when I launch a game and we'll see if I can make use of it or not because I've never tried before okay right we're into the game you probably didn't see it because editing but um, it tells you if you do Windows key G it brings up this and we can record the game oh. Control, oh, is that record? Yes, it's recording. So, uh, uh, I didn't really want to do that. Get in the vehicle. Are we in the driving seat? No, we're not. Y button to change seat. What I'm actually doing here doesn't matter. Oops, okay, that's also not. Oh, you burp. We want to go, please. I think we're stuck. Oh, oh God. There we go. Oh, okay. Forgetting the controls completely. Anyway, this, this is Crisis running maximum settings in terms of shaders and anti-aliasing and blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, let's just shoot him. But also with like screen capture going on, which is cool. Um, oh dear, oh dear, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, but great refresh rate. I don't know how to get an outside view. But we're not doing this to... to <laughs> Let's just get out of the car. Where is he? But as you can see, we're getting a good frame rate lovely detail in the graphics I mean it's an old game but it still is one that will push a gaming system a bit maybe certainly a really cheap low-cost crappy laptop would not be able to do this um, so that pleased me no end I wanted to play this on a decent system have wanted to for like over a decade it just shows how old the game is really I mean how long has this been out ages um yeah so i'm probably going to combine the footage from the camera with the footage that it's recording okay so here we are in grand theft auto 5 let's let's do that let's bring that up don't want him answering his phone right now we're just going to mess about and see how it looks as you can see, and again, we're recording this, so uh, there's extra CPU power being used to record the uh, the video output. Um, it looks absolutely lovely. It's on maximum settings. Bugger off, Simeon, whatever you want. I'm not interested. Go away. This is running, I believe better than it runs on my PS4. I think I've got better draw distance, definitely running in a higher resolution. Um, no, go away. Yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I hope I can work out how to... Uh, whoops, oh, 
Yeah. <laughs> I hope I can find out where it's saving the video files because uh, it's the first time I've tried recording screen footage, whatever, with the capture thingy on here. It also it broadcasts, which suggests I can use this for streaming though the Wi-Fi where I'm currently living is not capable of that but you know at some point in the future you never know I've got to figure out how to do that and hopefully find out how to I would have liked it if it could capture the webcam at the same time as capturing the on-screen action but I know there are programs that will do that and I will maybe investigate those what's it called OBS or something OSB old son of a whatever um yeah so Grand Theft, Fo yeah, Grand Theft Auto 5 runs absolutely bloody gorgeous. Let's bang out of that. If I can remember how to get out. Oh, it told me where it saved it. Where's it? Videos, captures. Cool, excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah, obviously, as you can see there, it does modern gaming very adequately. It plays Battlefield 4 just as well. I'm not even going to bother to demonstrate. Take my word for it, Battlefield 4 runs just as well as Grand Theft Auto 5 and Crisis. Um, there will be more modern, more up-to-date games than those because they're all getting on a bit, they're a bit long in the tooth, that it probably won't be able to run on maximum settings. But you know, whatever you run on it, it's going to look pretty nice. Emulation-wise, it is as you would expect, very, very capable. How much do I show you? How much do you care about? Um, PlayStation, yeah, you know, absolutely bloody amazing, as you would expect. It, emulators on the PC I'm less familiar with than I am on Android, so some of them took a little bit of setting up. Um, P, let's have a look at the PSP, because uh, why not? I like PSP. Tell you what, I'm going to turn down the audio on the laptop. Test Drive Unlimited is a game that on all of the Android systems I have tried to play it on, it just did not want to know. Would not do it. Not capable. You were lucky if you could get a single frame out of it. Never mind running at a slow frame rate, you know, with frame skip set at 4 or 5 or 10 or whatever. You know, it, you were counting it in frames per minute. So, uh, the difficulty is fine. Here's some music. You were very close to know. Yes. No, 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 no. Intro. You see, the frame rate is not great on this. The resolution is not high on this. Um, I've got all the settings, emulation settings down as low as they will go. We don't want that car. It's just silly. And so is that. We want the Aston Martin because Aston Martin... Come on now, let's let's just be going, eh? Sound does work. I have turned the volume down because this is playing music, and I haven't worked out how to make it have sound without playing music, because I haven't spent more than a few minutes investigating that aspect. I've just been trying to make it run. So here, here we are. It, it's ugly as sin, but it runs. Um, that may not seem impressive to you, but. The fact that it runs at all when I've never been able to get it to run on anything else pleases me a lot. Um, let's show you something that does run significantly better. I'm not doing the direct capture for this, but uh, you can see how utterly gorgeous this runs. I've got the um, whoops, yeah, just run straight into the mine, Steve, because you're a doofus. Um, increased re render resolution and everything. So it's it's running better than it would run on an actual PSP significantly. Um, it's gorgeous. Oops. And that's me just getting it wrong because I'm not really paying attention to playing the game. I'm just waffling and stuff to show you 
what it looks like because that's what I do. So there you are. Gran Turismo also looks bloody gorgeous. So that's PSP. It runs gloriously. There will still be some games that don't run particularly well. I haven't tried God of War. I know that's meant to be a difficult one. Saturn emulation runs very well when your emulator isn't an ass, but it is currently being an ass, so I can't show you that. Um, okay, there we go. Sound is off, just because I've got the volume down for, you know, copyright and stuff. But um, it's all about how smoothly does it run. You'll be able to see that here. I've got everything turned up to the max and it goes very nicely indeed looks lovely runs silky silky smooth and I mean I I think Mario Kart is one that a lot of emulators are optimized for where other games don't run as well I haven't tried any other games on it I should but I'm like, don't care. I'm not a fan of the N64, but I do love Mario Kart. So it's like, if this runs, I'm happy. And it runs beautifully. You would expect it to, but I'm just demonstrating the fact. Next, Dreamcast. Because we're kind of going up in terms of what does it run well and what does it not. Um, what one should we look at? What one doesn't take too long to get into. Let's just do Daytona. I won't get into the gameplay, I'm just going to let it run in, in demo mode because it's pretty enough. There. Absolutely bloody gorgeous. Um, silky smooth, nice, I don't know what resolution that's at compared to the native Dreamcast resolution, but it looks lovely. It, it, you know, it works. Dreamcast is one of those that isn't too difficult to emulate. Certainly I can run it on Android systems that are significantly less powerful than this, so you would expect it to be good. I'm just demonstrating that it is good. Um, Dolphin for GameCube and Wii. I haven't got any Wii games to, to um, try on it, but I have got the one that you would expect me to have. Which button do you... okay, that button. It's very inconsistent when you're not actually using a, uh, a proper GameCube control. You don't know what button it's going to respond to and what one it isn't. Let's get the mouse pointer off of there. Don't know what button. Ah, well that was reverse. <laughs> <laughs> haven't got that configured quite right I don't think but as you can see um, gorgeous GameCube it will emulate very nicely certainly this game how do I fire that's how I fire that okay cool um, I know there are other games that are not as easy to emulate I've, I've tried the Star Wars one on it um, Rogue Leader something like that Rogue Squadron, Rogue something, um, and I on an oh no, it wasn't on an Android system. It was on um, it was a far less capable Windows system, and that just didn't want to know. I don't know if it will run on here or not. I haven't currently got the ISO, and Nintendo being what they are, Nintendo ISOs are now currently not nearly so easy to come across. Um, so, yeah, can't tell you. Anyway, that's GameCube. Certainly, do I... Oh, come on. It plays Double Dash very nicely indeed. Um, and then, the one that I'm most excited about. You can boot your games... Sort of like have a speedy boot up rather than using the full emulating the full disk drive sort of activity, it will load it faster, which is great. This is PS2 on PC XE2 something, whatever it's called, I don't remember. 
Okay, I've tinkered with my settings and here we are now with Gran Turismo 4 running. Um, okay. Difficult to play without the sound because I can't hear the um, the engine to know when to change gear. But yes, it it's running now at double PS2 screen resolution and still looks very nice. It was nicer at three times resolution, but whatever. A um, little bit of uh, pausing there with the system doing other things. Probably would help if I was there. That's a bit better. It's lovely. It impresses the hell out of me. Uh, certainly I've never been able to emulate the PS2 on any other computer I've ever owned. I know some some proper high-powered gaming computers will emulate the PS3. I know, have no way of testing if this particular laptop will run PS3 because I don't have a Blu-ray drive and there's no way I'm even going to attempt to download an ISO from a Blu-ray because bloody humongous. Uh, never mind whether I'd actually be able to find one or not, I'm just not going there. So PS2 is going to be the limit of my emulation on this system, but I just wanted to show you this to demonstrate that it works. Um, and it works very nicely, and I'm very happy about that. I probably ought to try capturing it direct from the screen, but I've just had so much bother trying to get it all running that... Oh, all right, then you twisted me arm. Come on now, give me the... Now I can't do it. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let's capture a bit of footage, A. Eh? You're doing it. Is it that it's doing it? So, gears please, there we go. It's a pity I didn't select a better track. Because this one's not exactly scenic and not going to give you the best impression. But whatever, here we are at the high speed ring in a Mitsubishi FTO. Cheap old second hand thing. It's kind of interesting to see how while the 3D stuff is rendered at a higher resolution check out those numbers underneath the mirror and see how chunky and pixelated they are because the, the bitmap stuff it doesn't alter the resolution of those because it can't but yeah that is that oh look at me revving the knackers off here I'll probably blow my engine up doing that I have tried other games on here. Um, Spyro Enter the Dragonfly runs very nicely. Test Drive Unlimited runs a, a whole lot better than it does on the PSP. So uh, that's cool. There we go. That is PS2 emulation on this here. God, what is it called? HP Pavilion 15-BC400NA. Hmm. So... What else can I say about this? Okay. Because it just occurred to me, this thing's got a webcam, and some people might want to know what's the webcam like. This is the first time I've ever tried it. Uh, I def maybe can't tell. Very um, wide angle, a lot wider angle than any kind of any camera I've used really you never normally get this kind of view when I'm running my uh, handy cam that I use for recording videos so uh, yeah we've got pretty low light in here um, not ideal for recording videos it probably looks a good deal better than this in broad daylight but we don't have any daylight at all it's dark out there um, I don't know how the microphone is sounding I'm presuming it is picking up the microphone will will I'll just edit this into the video somewhere and we'll see what it sounds like hey um other things what things might you ask that's the thing well there's my floor um the keyboard as you can possibly see it's a chiclet style thing which for the longest time, I was not a fan of chiclet keys, but this, I've kind of got used to it. A weird thing about it, and this is entirely a me thing, because 
other laptops I've used haven't had a number pad. Um, when I've sat them on my lap, touchpad has been in the middle, like it is here. Um, that, without the number pad, would be centred on my lap. But with this thing on my lap, it's all off-centre because it's wider and this thing is taking up a bit of space. And I find, because the key... the, the the main part of the keyboard is not centered directly in front of me. I make a lot of typos. That's a weird thing, and I only do it when it's on my lap. I can kind of compensate when it's on, on the desk, but it's a weird thing. Um, but it's just what you've got to expect when you've got a big wide laptop rather than like a netbook, notebook kind of thing with the number pad. Um, the touchpad itself. I I have used significantly worse touchpads than this. I've also used a touchpad that I liked a lot more, but I am getting used to it. It's reasonably accurate. It's reasonably responsive. Not the best. Very far. The worst I used was on that. Uh, I've got a chewy netbook mini slim thingamajig, which has got all kinds of gestures and things on it that you can't turn off, and you swipe across like that, and it opens windows and shuts windows and opens. To just it's really bloody annoying. This doesn't do any of that. Um, it, it, this responds to up to like four fingered gestures that I don't know what the hell they do, but um. And you look at it and you're like, well, I really wish I'd got the physical buttons on here that they used to have on old style touchpads rather than having to do the two button thing to open a menu or whatever. But actually, there are some there. They're just, you can't see them. The, the pad itself has buttons underneath it. I don't know if there's a centre one or not. But uh, yeah, so it does have buttons. You just can't see them. Um... The screen, um, it's one of, the, there are only like a couple of things about this that I'm not really thrilled about. I mean, there are the two quirks that I mentioned in terms of booting up, needing to pull out the power supply to update the firmware. Um, what was the other one? Yes, needing to tell the, the, the games which chipset to use. Other, the other things that I'm not a fan of, I'm not a fan of the screen. It's got a nice anti-glare coating, which is cool. Viewing angle is a thing in terms of brightness. I know on some screens where there's a shallow viewing angle, you know, you move around a bit and all the colours go weird. It doesn't do that, but um, depending on how... I don't know if this is going to show it, probably not. How, depending on how high you are sitting, what angle, what vertical angle you're viewing it at, affects the brightness of it. And finding the sweet spot is not... It never feels quite perfect, and that bugs me. It's a minor thing, but I would have liked it to be a bit better. The only other thing I can say about it that is not brilliant is the speed of the hard drive, and that was always going to be a compromise. Um, the other laptop that I had looked at and was sort of umming and ahhing about, I've actually found the name of it now, it's a HP Pavilion Power 15-CB004NA mm, with an Intel i5-7300HQ quad-core. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that one had a 256GB solid-state drive in it, which would be a lot faster than this. But 256GB, I've... I've nearly put 500 gigs on this thing already, so um, that was not going to do the job. I don't even know how I've used up that much storage, but I have. Yeah, you. there is a um, empty M.2 slot inside this thing, so you can fit your own solid-state drive in it. There's also an empty uh, RAM slot as well, so you could double the RAM on it and speed it up I imagine handy to know it's there I, I, I would the extra RAM make a significant difference don't know the solid state drive certainly would I think when installing the solid state drive you need to have a PCIe drive I think if you put in the SATA type M.2 you would end up disabling the uh, the physical drive that's inside this thing I think that's how they work 
you only have one SATA drive and if you've got one in there already and you put in an M.2 you disable the one you've got so get a PCIe based M.2 this is something I heard on a video I don't know this myself my technical knowledge is limited so I might be wrong but it's something to bear in mind and if you're thinking of getting one investigate that yourself and make sure you know what you're doing if you're gonna put a, a solid state drive in it hmm okay that I think is about all I've got to say about it apologies to all those people who were expecting a really technical knowledgeable review you're not going to get that here because I'm not that kind of person and I'm really only doing this because when I was buying this here thing on Amazon there were no reviews of this whatsoever at all anywhere except the one on Amazon which was very limited you know benchmarks none I don't do benchmarks anyway but um, n nothing, no information whatsoever. It's like it doesn't exist. Well, certainly not on, on YouTube anyway. Now it does. There you go. Um, sorry if the video is not what you were looking for. But if you just want a basic overview, you're looking for a cheap gaming laptop, you know, that's not a thousand pounds or something. It, when I bought it, it was 600. It's now 700. Probably because they've only got one left. If you want one, hurry. I don't know if they're going to get more in stock. Um, would I recommend it? If you're on a budget and you want a game on a laptop, yes, I absolutely would. I know you can get a gaming PC desktop cheaper, more powerful, obviously. But I specifically wanted a laptop because I want to do gaming and video processing in more than one place. And I don't want to cart a desktop around with me. So this was the way I chose to go. And after doing a bit of research and being aware of my own financial limitations, this was the one to go for. Mm. OK, I'll shut up now. Thank you for watching. What do you mean, subscribe to his Patreon? I already paid for breakfast. What more does he want? What? Oh, seems he wasn't invited. Oh, I suppose I could eat his as well.